Hey there everybody, this video is about a Fusion 360 post processor for the Centroid Acorn uh, turning uh, CNC control software. You can download this post processor from a public Dropbox location. Look in the description of this video and you'll see the URL that will take you to that Dropbox location where you can download this post. Uh, I'll just briefly go over uh, this post processor and what it's all about. So I started out with the generic FANUC post processor and I just made the changes uh, to that generic FANUC post processor that were necessary to make it compatible with the Centroid Acorn uh, format. And I'll highlight those changes shortly. I just wanted to show you the uh, tool paths here so you could get a flavor of uh, what I used here just to prove out this post and make the changes that I did. So we have some basic turning, we have some drilling, all fairly normal stuff. Go a little faster here. Have some grooving. And I threw some threading in here. So these are the things that I just was messing around with here to prove this out. And uh, it's enough to give you an idea of what it's all about. All right. So basic stuff, but, you know, if you can do this, you can do a lot of different things. So let's go on here to the post. The post processor, like I said, I started out with the generic FANUC post processor, which was very close to what will work fine with the Centroid Acorn. And then I just made changes to it. Anywhere I made a change in this post processor, you will see a comment that says Franco. So if you want to go through the post processor, just search for Franco and you can see everything that I added. Um, you know, this is something you may use here. I added this, this var debug. If you make this equal to one, the post will output code with, um, it'll tell you where each line of the CNC program was generated in the post processor. So if you're going to edit this post on your own, use this var debug post. That'll help you out a little bit. Uh, very quickly, I'll post this program out so you can see the code. And here's what it looks like. Fix the comments, put them in the format that is friendly for the Centroid Acorn. Uh, remove the G18 plane selection, so normally in the FANUC post, anytime it flips into an arc, it wants to fire out a plane selection command. But if you look in the G codes for the Centroid, those, they don't exist. There's no need to give, you know, do plane selection and turning. Uh, so I removed those. So they were taken out of the post, any, anywhere in the post processor where it would have called a a G18 or a G17, we just took that out. And you can, you know, you'll see that if you go through the post, you'll see the places where we, we stripped it out. I leave the original line of code in the post. I just commented out and I had a new line uh, with my changes. So that's been taken care of. At the end of each block of tool code, it's going to give you a G28U0W0. So that's where, when you're setting your job up, you can tell it where you basically want your safe safe place to be for the tool to go when you do your tool change. So you'll get that, and you'll get a move in X and Z. Other things that were changed, Fusion 360 has a lot of different uh, cans or different cycles for drilling. It has all these different things, uh, way more than are, than are supported in the, the Centroid software. So if you look at the manual, you know, the Centroid just has the, the basic cycles, has G83, G84. It doesn't have like dozens and dozens and dozens of different can cycles, which is fine. So in Fusion, rather than dealing with all that, what I did is I set the post processor to just output the code longhand rather than trying to use like a one line or two line of, you know, some can cycle. 
So you'll see down here there's this thing, expand cycle point, that forces the can cycle to be output as a bunch of individual moves. And if you look at the program, you'll see what I'm talking about. Like here's your code for center drill. It's just literally going to use G0s and G1s to make the move. Here's the code for a deep drill. Rather than using the uh, G83, it's going to literally just output all the different moves. So the program's longer, but if you're a CAM so software person, you probably won't care about that. You just want to make sure your machine's going to run. The other thing that I have to mention, and uh, this took me a little bit longer to figure out, there is a value in Fusion 360. Let's see if I can find it. It's right here in front of me. I just have to see. Here it is. This value, passes incremental depth. Right now, there's nowhere inside a Fusion 360 user interface to change this. It defaults to 2 millimeters, or approximately 80,000 inches. I put a ticket in. They're going to add that to a future version of the software. But right now, there's nowhere to change that in Fusion 360. But what it does is it affects your drill cycles. So what you can see here... If you look at this line of code, the first peck is at negative 200 thou. It retracts, then it rapids to negative 120, or 80 thou away from where the last peck was. Then it starts drilling again. That is okay, but if you're using really small pecks, like let's say your peck is only 100 thou, it's going to happen. You're going to, you're, you know, you're going to cut a lot of air. You know, you're only making 100 thou peck, and you're rapiding 80 thou away to begin the next peck. Right, so you can see what's going to happen. You're going to cut a lot of air. So until they fix that in the user interface, what I add it is a user variable in the post processor. I add it this value here. It's called drill safe distance. It defaults to two millimeters, but if you want to change it, you can change that value to one millimeter or 0.5 millimeters, whatever you want it to be. And that will force your drill to rapid closer um, when it's pecking. So that's there. Hopefully that will help a little bit and make life a little bit easier, at least until they update the user interface. And I think, oh yeah, one other thing we'll talk about is threading. It outputs the threading with a G32, which we'll just post this out again. So G32 will make a lot of code, but it works, it's simple, it's easy to read, and although it, it's not easy to edit here manually, all of the things that you want to change are right here in the user interface. So you can change the way that it infeeds, you can change the angle, you can number of step downs, the depth, um, the pitch, obviously. All those things are here in the, the Fusion 360 user interface. So G32 will work great. If you pick Use Cycle, it, it uses like G92 instead of G32. So no, no matter what you do, it's not going to output a G76. But G32 is fine. It's, it's simple. It's easy to read. It's very effective. And hopefully it will work for what you're doing. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to stop right there. Once again... You can download this post processor, processor from the Dropbox location. Just look for the uh, URL in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope this is useful. Have a great day.